Oh man. Oh man. I cannot believe I get to talk about this guy today. Anyway, for those of you guys who followed me on PRC, like the actual website back three or four years ago, you'll know in the final year of the site, I did a story on a guy from Scotland by the name of Josh Martin. This dude's backstory is wild. It is a level of sociopathy that I can only aspire to, Jeeve. It's fucking crazy. Uh, let me just give you a rundown of this guy's backstory, because it, it's the kind of stuff where it's like, you're kidding me, this exists in this community? Yes, yes, it did. So basically, this guy was playing F1 2014 on Xbox with his friends, and just like emailed his local cable TV news station, and was like, yo, look at my stats in F1 2014. I'm, I'm, I'm an esports superstar. I'm going to make it into a real race car one day. And the news being full of idiot soccer moms and just clueless boomers were like okay and sent a camera crew to his house and ran a story on him and it set off a multi-year saga of this guy just blatantly lying and misleading people about who he was to just see how far he could climb the ladder in sim racing esports it is it is wonderful yet completely absurd let me let me just rattle off some of the things he did uh he told people after just a brief exchange with Caterham's social media person that he was actually Caterham F1's uh, official, you know, endorsed uh, simulator driver, and he would go to, like, university karting meets wearing, like, a Caterham F1 suit that he bought off eBay and, like, tell people that. Uh, he had a sim racing esports page where he said he had over 500 wins, which, again, were just Xbox Live wins, and he had 17 world records in Assetto Corsa, which we looked him up, and it turns out it was just, like, F1 car at drift track, and he was the only person on the leaderboard. Uh, he would join, like, random R-Factor 2 leagues on Facebook uh, that had, like, 15 people in them and tell them, like, he could get him a TV deal. Uh, he would go to, like, uh, eSports events in, like, the UK and Scotland and, like, do, like, public speaking seminars or at least be scheduled to give, like, speeches or seminars on, like, eSports management and stuff like that. Uh, it was completely fucking crazy. You know what? I'm probably not even covering everything, but I've probably got the basics down. Uh, after we exposed him and, you know, did an article on him, calling him out, and he apologized, and, you know, he said he'd go into hiding for a bit, uh, he, we, we kind of figured he would just go away and find a new hobby, and it would just be this, like, this thing that was this drama that lasted for, like, three days at most, and, and then it was this piece of trivia that would come up years down the, lo- the road of, you know, hey, remember that guy? He never actually went away. If you go and you search up Josh Martin Assetto Corsa, and I'll link to his Twitter below, he's actually still at it. Uh, he's still pushing uh, this esports persona. Uh, he's got like official apparel you can buy. He's supposedly sponsored by Thrustmaster and, and David Perel's Coach Dave Academy. And he is a massive, massive Assetto Corsa competition fanboy and tryhard. I find this completely hilarious because I've actually raced against him. Uh, this dude's trash. You know, I'll cut to the chase here. This dude's completely garbage, and I can either tell you this, or I can show you this. So today, uh, Josh Martin uploaded a video of him turning laps at the uh, Emola circuit in the new 2020 uh, ACC GT3 DLC in what's probably, I guess, the 2020 spec Ferrari 488. I figured, hey, you know what? Let's make things interesting. I'm going to jump in. I'll download the game. I really don't like ACC, so I didn't have it installed. And I'll just turn a lap with the, the default setup. And I'll just see what happens. Okay, obviously I took, you know, a couple shakedown laps to make sure my gear was right and my steering was set right. But, like, I'm just going to jump in default setup, see what happens. Because I got a feeling this guy is still this this fake-it-till-you-make-it esports superstar. And it's, it's just beautiful. And, I mean, I know where this is going. You guys could probably figure out where this is going, but sometimes it's more about the journey than the des- the destination. Am I right? So anyway, I'm on the right. Josh Martin's on the left. I'll play the clip. Rewind it just a bit. And before we even take the green flag, I want to point something out, because this, to me, is, is the most absurd part of this comparison. I'm running the aggressive preset setup because Imola is a high downforce track. You need downforce here. Yes, there are long straights, but the turns are more important. Josh comes out of the corner, not with a lot of speed, but I want you to watch what happens to the gap between us as we go down the front straightaway. By the time we hit the flag stand, Josh, who's about three car lengths behind me, is even with me. As we go into turn one at Tamburello, I just want you to see the gap as we hit the, uh, the caution lights up here. Martin's three car lengths ahead of me. This dude's running a low downforce setup. 
for someone with the connections he says he has with Thrustmaster, with Coach Dave Academy, for someone with the setup he has, for someone who promotes himself as like this hardcore esports player in, in a subtle course of competizione, for him to be running a low downforce bunk setup like this at a track this technical, this is mind-blowingly dumb. And I'll show you why. He has to take a very, very conservative line through Tamburello. Whereas I'm able to just monster truck over the turtle shells. And in three corners, the gap he gained on me from the start finish line because of the monster long straight, it's gone. It's completely gone. So we go into the Villeneuve Complex. I think that's the name of it. Anyway, it's turn five and turn six. I want to point out something else. His braking is really inconsistent. He actually brakes way too early here. He brakes in a style that is kind of reminiscent of what happens when you brake with uh, Driving Force GT plastic pedals, where it's super inconsistent, so some corners you're just like, oh, that's too much brake, or oh, that's not enough brake. He's having that same problem where he's actually give the car too much brake in a proper sim setup. So his general driving fundamentals are just not there, and he actually has to give the car a bit of gas going into turn 5, and then the car actually settles out and neutralizes in between turn 5 and turn 6. He's not carrying enough speed at all because he's fucked up his braking. Normally when you take 5 and 6, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, it's two smooth movements. You have a left-hand turn, and you flick the car right, and you have a right-hand turn. And you're usually carrying so much speed you go out to the sand, or very close to it. Josh doesn't have that speed at all. So he's running a bunk setup, and he's inconsistent in the braking. These are mistakes that your buddies would make in sim racing after about a year of constant play. And it's something you'd pat them on the back for and be like, Hey man, like you're actually doing pretty good. You just need to clean up a bit of your fundamentals, but that's a given. You're, you're new at this. Not the kind of mistakes I'd expect from JM13 with Thrustmaster and Coach Dave Academy on his Twitter banner. So we go into, I believe, what this is, turn 7. And again, I see another issue with Josh's driving fundamentals. He's not carrying enough speed to the center of the corner. The reason I can tell this is not from looking at the speed readouts, but usually when you come out of 7 here, the car naturally gets a bit erratic and floats out to the, uh, the track out boundary, the runoff curb. This doesn't happen for Josh. He actually exits the corner about a car width lower than where his car should be. It's not a good sign. Then we go up to turn 8. Turn 8 is probably the funnest corner on the track because when you nail it, you fucking fly and the car gets really light and it's really, really fun. So the proper way to take it, if you look on my side of the screen, you just barely clip the entry curb. You don't want to hit it because it will destabilize the car and cause a bunch of suspension, suspension bouncing. You don't want that. What happens is if you take the corner right, you'll kind of fly out to the exit curb here, and you'll flirt with a track boundary penalty. Like, I think it's a track limit penalty. Josh, again, he's inconsistent under braking. He slows down too much, and it results in the car exiting in the middle of the corner. He's actually down a whole gear, a whole gear more than he should be. He's taking this corner in second. No, man, it's a third gear corner, and as a result, he's lost time, and he exits the corner about a car width lower than he should be. It's not good. We go into turn 9. Turn nine's crazy on this track. Turn nine's where everybody wrecks. It's a high-speed downhill right-hander with a bit of a bump in the center. People wreck here. But with high downforce, it's not a big deal. The car just kind of understeers, and then it floats out to the exit curb here, which you use specifically to square yourself up for turn 10. Martin takes a really conservative line through turn 9, and he's way farther right than he should be. I mean, if you compare just where we are on the track... Even though, let's say I'm a car length ahead of him on the Delta, he's not where he should be. It's not good. Turn 10, I think he actually does a slight better job of hitting the apex than I do. But there's another problem. He's too slow. He's not carrying enough speed. The car doesn't float out to the outside of the track. I almost kiss the, uh, the turtle shells and flirt with the cut trap penalty. He has to almost manually drive there. He's not dealing with any understeer at all. He's not going quick enough. Now we come to turn 11 and 12, and this is where setup does not matter here. This has nothing to do with downforce package or whatever Josh is running. This is down to driver skill and driver knowledge. Turn 11 and 12 here at Imola, what you do when you enter this corner, to go fast at least, and this is a tip all you guys can take if you ever end up running here, you cut turn 11 shallow because most games cut track penalties allow you to monster truck over this curb, and then what that does is it actually scores you up quite well for turn 12, which is the exit part of the chicane. You get a straight run off the chicane, and you just floor it. And you basically run as wide as you can before the game penalizes you or you monster truck over the turtle shells. Don't hit the turtle shells, you'll die. Martin, by comparison, 
He's driving this track the way a lot of newcomers drive this track, where it's almost like he doesn't know the track at all. He enters way too wide, which, which makes the corner too sharp. He scrubs off too much speed, which means when it comes to turn 12, he doesn't have the exit speed he needs. Loses a lot of time here. It's not a setup thing. That's a driver knowledge thing. I would expect someone, again, who's sponsored by Thrustmaster and Coach Dave Academy, to know how to take this corner, not just because Emil is a common track, but because he's actually raced here before. He ran here in the uh, Thrustmaster Lotus 98T League uh, from a few years ago in the original set of Corsa. And while they run a historic version of Imola, this corner's still here. In three years, he hasn't learned how to take this corner. Now, his low downforce config actually lets him, you know, kind of catch up to me. But I'm going to ruin on, uh, rain on this parade here just a bit. If he's running a proper setup, which he should have been with, with higher downforce and, you know, a bit more uh, 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 sketchy car, he would be a whole second off pace. Because his lines are just not good. He's being assisted because uh, with Imola's final sector being two long straights, he can gain about four tenths on me, just like he did at the start of the lap. But in conclusion, for this guy who's already been exposed as kind of a fraud in the sim racing community to continue, I guess, no lifing a set of course of competizione without even getting the driving fundamentals down, without even going to the track with the right setup in the car, is, is, is mind-blowing. The, this might be the biggest sim racing bust of, of, all, of all time. And I say that, you know, not to be, not to meme on the guy, but in, in, with complete sincerity. This is a guy who has his own apparel line, has, has sponsorships from brands that, you know, like, we have to pay pretty good money for. You know, it, it, it's pretty expensive to buy setups from Coach Dave Academy, and this guy presumably gets them either for free or at least is connected to people who can, who can help him along. And this guy is showing up to a high downforce track with, with a, a, a setup that to, makes no sense. As a result, I crossed the line with a 143.9, which you can see on the dash. It's a small number here. Martin, by comparison, he fades the video out, but he runs a 144.5. I don't play ACC. I really don't like this game. I don't like how the tires feel. I know that's kind of controversial to say. It's my personal thing. I usually don't even have this game installed. I really don't like ACC. I jumped in with the default setup, and in 20 minutes was half a second faster than a guy sponsored by Thrustmaster with his own apparel line. I don't know what to tell you other than Josh Martin might be the biggest sim racing bust of all time. 